Hey, how's it going? This is Gazelig for GrinderSchool.com. Uh, here today with part seven of the uh, hand history review from the uh, five Euro six max on uh, PokerStars France. Uh, here we are with three uh, players left. Uh, we're in second place, but kind of pretty close to a uh, guy in third place, and then this guy is out in front. Uh, but as we notice, one double up from uh, from this player. Um, would put us into the chip lead if we you know, eliminate this guy and then we're going to be in a much more favourable position um, going into, into heads up. So that's the idea at the moment is to um, to a position where we can comfortably play heads up, um, try to avoid situations uh, where we get a lot of chips in, um, probably against this player uh, simply because he's the only player at the moment that can eliminate us whereas we can eliminate this player so we can put a lot of pressure on them. Um, Quick reminder of the stats then, uh, pretty passive stats, 127 hands, um, and this player was you know a little bit more aggressive, 83%, 8%, 8%, not massively high um, from either of these players actually, um, so we can kind of respect their three bets a little bit more. Um, what I'm going to do, um, so so far the previous six parts I have just played the key hands. Um, should have probably done this at the start of the final table uh, where we played every hand just to get a feel for dynamics. Um, but um, we're going to do it now um, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll make sure for future videos that we meet to the final table, um, probably even the final two tables as well, final table bubble, that we uh, we look at every single hand um, you know, to get a feel for how players are playing and how we can play against them based on what we're picking up. Okay, um, so this player raises, we're going to be folding there. Um, so a quick look at this. Yeah, so there's nothing to actually to say. It's far suited, good hand to be opening. Um, and we get flatted by the, the passive player. Uh, it's not a particularly good board to, to see, but um, if he has a you know a, a suited connector lower than uh, nine, so we'd just think like seven six suited, something like that. Um, we are ahead anyway. I mean, he has some outs, uh, so six outs um, to pair up plus uh, the eight for the gut shot. Um, so it's ten outs. So you know, he's got pretty good, pretty good equity. Um, I mean, we could fold out, we could fold out that particular hand, uh, but there's you know, he's maybe some other hands that um, have much mother equity on here, uh, but we are still ahead of. Um, so. I'm trying to think of those hands. I, I would say that this kind of hits his, his calling range quite quite a lot. Um, and if we were behind pre-flop, then we're you know we're, we're still behind now. Um, so I'm hoping I just choose to check this one. It's not you know they're connected. They're kind of middling cards. Kind of uh, would hit the pre-flop pre-flop callers range more than it hits mine. So I do check. He then fires small, and we just give it up. Um, not looking to to, to play. Um, you know, smallish pots like this at the moment. I know it's sort of five big blinds. Um, we've got a forty. Um, we don't have to try and fight fight every every pot. So this player makes it four x now. It's kind of weird. Um, definitely not going to be defending. If he'd made it two x here, I probably would have defended with eight nine. Um, this player opens and they get flat. We'll see how this plays out now. This player bets uh, just under a half pot and he follows and take it down. Uh, going to be opening any ace from the button. Um, it's, it's probably better to fire um, here uh, if he does have two over cards. Um, we want to try and fold out that equity. Um, he has, so I do decide to bet here, and he does call. Um, this time we decide to check. Uh, we, I guess we, we we look at his pre-flop calling range. Um, so if we just go back a little bit. Um, so we've got calling range, Broadway hands, pocket pairs, decent ASEX. Um, then the, the hands that are going to hit this board, um, I guess I'm in pseudo connectors as well. So it's something like 8 7, um, 9 8, what you call a bet here, uh, obviously over pairs. Maybe even a hand like 5s and 4s and 3s, it doesn't think that I've hit anything. He is pretty passive as well, so it could be the kind of player that is going to call with like Ace 2. Uh, ace two suited here, um, so it doesn't really make sense to be firing another barrel on turn um, six. Kind of makes him feel a little bit more confident if he does have a smaller pocket pair. Um, you know, I'd then fire a bet here. Um, 
you know, he could he could be on a draw. If he's on a draw now, um, then we um, we could you know we, we could still be ahead come the river. Uh, we know he doesn't have the nut flush draw, not club draw anyway. Um, can see how it how it plays out. He checks again. Uh, he's pretty passive. And I don't think there's any reason to bet. We could be ahead of all of his draws. We could have a hand like nine eight that he's just chosen not to bet. Um, we could also have a missed club draw, um, which we uh, no doubt are going to be ahead of. Um, so there's no need to check. Keep the pot small. Uh, may may well have won. Um, we have done so. I'm not really sure what he's doing on the on the flop with his flop balls. He's got two over cards, and we made the bet pretty small. Um, but on the river, I think if he bets, we're going to have to fold. And I think I would probably have bet in his shoes, which we've checked back on the turn. If we had a strong hand, the only strong hands we're going to be checking back there to feign weakness with. It's probably a full house, maybe trips, but it's kind of getting pretty drawy. So um, the only hands we're comfortable with is like 7-6 or pocket 6s, pocket 2s, pocket 7s. Um, so I think he could have uh, probably bet in that spot. Um and, and, and taking it down a large percentage of the time. But now we know that he's going to call with two overs. Um, that we, you know, that may, might change our, our thinking um, moving, moving forward. This player makes a min raise, and we could definitely flat hit. This is kind of hand that would probably uh, would be good to three bet bluff with, because we know that if he four bets, we can just fold. Um, we have a blocker to like ace jack and pocket jacks. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not ideal. Um, but it's not really a hand I want to be playing um, with, really. Uh, we could easily be dominated by Ace Jack, King Jack, Queen Jack, Jack Ten, Jack Nine, Jack Eight, um, and then obviously um, Ace Eight, Ace Nine. Um, sorry, I don't know why I just said that. Uh, scrap what? Uh, ace Nine, Ace Eight. Uh, obviously, all of the Jacks and Sevens are there, that are better than um, better than us. Uh, a bit of a brain fart uh, this evening. Um, so, you know, I could definitely defend. I'd just like to take uh, control of the, the pot, um, but I have been three betting quite a lot, and I think I just chose to give this one up. Here with 8-3, um, we could definitely limp here and then fire any flop, uh, but he's showing a propensity to call our flop bets. I mean, you know, I'd sooner just, you know, 2,000 in there already. We don't have to play this, play this hand. If we look at his fold to big blind, so he only, I don't know, four big blinds, small blinds, pretty, pretty low. Um, and we've only got three op three opportunities there. Um, I think it would be good to find a hand that we are going to raise and just keep keep sort of hammering away to see see if that that changes, see how he reacts. I mean, at this stage, we should be able to to see how he's reacting rather than uh, uh, focusing on on stats. But I just decided to give that one up. Decided to give the five four up. He raises again and we fold. So we're taking, you know, just taking our time here. And then I just decide to uh, just limp and then he checks. We're going to expect that from this player. Um, it's not very aggressive at all. And we can fire here. Um, and we do. Uh, so we saw him earlier call with uh, a much, you know, just two over cards. So he could have a, a wide range of, of hands here. Um, so I think I could definitely see betting. You could also see checking because he's probably going to bet when he has it. and check when he's on a draw of any kind. I uh, do decide to, to bet, uh, and then we pick up two pair on on the river. Um, so he could definitely have a spade draw, I could definitely have a queen, uh, I could definitely have a hand, I could just a random 6x. Um, he could even have a hand like king jack or king 10, or something like that. Um, I don't expect him to, to bluff when he when he misses though, and I can't remember. So I do just decide to go for value here. Um, I think that's that's pretty good because if he was the kind of player that was going to bet when he when he missed, then uh, I could see us check calling or check raising the river. Um, but here I just want to get value from his stronger hands in his range, and unfortunately he did fold. So there I wouldn't mind, I, I would have liked to see a three bet. Um, he's he's decided to steal quite a lot. It's pretty cheap steal for him. Um, and we need to sort of make a stand at some point. And it, again, it's the kind of hand that we can uh, three bet and fold to a five bet um, and just play cautiously in position. He seems to be playing pretty aggressive, this player, so we, we, you know, we don't want to be 
giving him pots uh, too much. The other thing to con consider, the reason why I don't want to just let him steal pot after pot, is the fact that when we do get a heads up, um, or if we do get a heads up, we want to be still in with a shot of winning. If he has like 600k and we have 50k, then again, you know, it's pretty pretty tough. And he can be ridiculously aggressive. So again, I'd like to see a three bet here. Eventually we do. He decides to four bet, and unfortunately we have to we have to fold this time. Um, you know, maybe it's the wrong timing, or maybe he just recognised. I mean, he he can make that bet pretty small. It's just a double our bet. Um, but that extra, what is it, 28k that he puts in, kind of puts our whole stack on the line. Um, so that's something called leverage. He's leveraging uh, our stack there. Um, so it's something that he's able to do as the aggressor. Just put an extra 18k out there um, to pick up a pot that's 27 and a half k. So um, yeah, if we were in that situation, that's something that we we should be looking looking to do, and it's a pretty cool move, um, especially at the final table when uh, he's obviously very clear, um, very it's very obvious to him that we're sort of playing for the second and want to get to heads up. Okay, he goes bet bet, and he folds on the on the turn. So this player is a, a good source of, uh, of of chips, especially when we do pick up the hands. We raise this time for the button. We've taken a few off. Uh, we decide to let the three two go, eight two go. Uh, I think we should probably be putting a lot of pressure on this player. Um, the only problem is, is that he's going to be playing in position against us, and he does like to call bets. Um, so I don't want to just blindly, uh, you know, raise here and then bet the flop and then have to give up and just give him the pot every time. So kind of. You know, I think I think raising from the button would be a good uh, opportunity. Probably just with any two cards at this stage. Uh, this player is re folding 69%, so still enough to make a, a raise uh, here profitable. Uh, this guy's folding a lot of the time. Uh, I've said this in previous videos. If we look at this, folding small blind 81%, and this guy is folding the big blind 69%. So if we multiply those two numbers together, it's about 56% on average. Um, so if we min raise here, um, which pot's not actually that big given the fact there's only three players putting antis in now, um, but it's still just about be break even to be raising almost any two cards. Um, I won't do the maths because I've done it in pre previous videos, um, but it makes sense to be aggressive at this stage. And I don't think I've been aggressive enough. We've seen now I've folded quite a few buttons, and I don't think that's that's good enough. Um, so that would be you know definitely telling myself I needed to to fix that. Uh, okay, so this guy shows pocket sevens, which is which is interesting. So he decides to limp pocket sevens. This guy decides to min raise. I'm not really sure what the purpose of this is. Uh, I guess it allows him to take the lead in the pot, um, the lead in the hand, and then bet the flop. And you know this guy could fold quite a lot. He's folding more than half the time. But I just think it gives this player such good odds, and he's going to be able to play in position, and he's pretty passive, and he's going to call, and he's going to make this guy's life really, really hard. So I'm not sure I like it at all. And he does min raise on the flop, and he's so he's raising pocket sevens on this kind of board, and uh, so that's a raise for information. He wants to know exactly where he's at, um, which is which is good to know for, from our point of view. And we limp here, decide to bet, and get called. Uh, decide to bet again. Um, I think this is something I'd like to to work on is my uh, turn bet sizing, um, because I've decided to fire again here. Probably want to get him off. Well, this is the thing I don't. I'm just trying to say that I wanted to get him off like a, a nine or a five, but we're we're ahead of both hands. Um so we want to charge the draws more. Um so you want to bet an amount that charges the draws and also gets value from like nine ten, so it has a pair plus a gut shot. Um so I think we can go a little bit bigger here, um seven or eight K instead. Uh, this time he does it does fold. And we open and we take it down. So you see that it doesn't really matter what hand we've got. I mean, this has a bit of playability post flop, um, but we've been pretty tight, so we get a bit of respect. Again, we could three bet here. Um, could even decide to flat here um, because you wouldn't expect us to play a hand like this, and maybe we can pick up um, a big a big pot. Um, you know, Sudo one gapper has the potential to give us a pretty pretty strong hand, um, allowing us to to make a lot of chips. Um, but he hasn't been that tight, and I think he's going to be capable of, of getting away from his hand uh, if we show suddenly that we've got a pretty strong hand. Now, as you can see, that I'm not really three betting out of position. 
Um, I, it's really because I can't put this player under enough pressure. He can with me. You can see earlier how he was able to bet a small amount, four bet a small amount, and pretty much committed me to the to the hand. Um, so I don't really want to be three betting here unless I'm going to be going for it. Now this player is raising more than three x. Okay, so this looks like a pretty big pot, significant pot. This guy four x's it, and this guy decides to to three bet, and he just get a flat in position. Um, we know this player is weak; he's passive. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure this player's got a pretty strong hand. Um, but he checks, and it's not a very. I mean, if he has a hand like Ace King, Ace Queen, uh, King Queen, something like that, then he it's not a good board for him, um, and such that. This player's only got a pot size bet left now. Plays check, check, bets about third pot, and this guy actually folds. Um, that's pretty bad to commit. I mean, how much does he commit there? An extra 20k, which is 20% of his stack. So I would say I maybe only do this if I had something like pocket aces, pocket kings, where I wanted to trap this guy. Um, but we've already said that this guy who has probably got a fairly strong hand here. To be three betting someone that's 4xing, um, pretty strong hands, he's probably willing to go with it. So actually, if I had a strong hand like aces and kings, I'd want to get all the money in pre-flop, so I'd uh, probably just 4-bet all in. Uh, I wouldn't make a, mess, make a small 4-bet there because it just looks you know, super strong. Okay, so we get an all-in here. Uh, it's an interesting... That's how many big blinds does he have? 20 big blinds, so... This player's been opening you know, a moderate amount on the button. Let's have a quick look. Actually, it's quite a lot. Uh, but for three-handed, you'd expect it. And uh, manages to hold with pocket fives, and we get to we get to heads up, which is brilliant. So I like this player's play. Um, he doesn't have to. This is the thing. Like I see a lot of players doing this. They got oh, 19 bigs or ace queen against an aggressive player. I know what I'll do. I'll shovel in. You don't have to. I mean, he could have easily. Um, just called here. Uh, there's nothing suggesting that this guy is going to be shoving light, so he's not going to expect a light call from this player. Um, so he, he's better off shoving his, his hands that he, you know, as a bluff. The hands like nine eight suited or jack ten suited, or you know, small to medium pocket pairs, rather than eight the hand like ace queen. Because if you think about it, this player has potential to fold hands like ace jack, ace ten, ace nine. Probably not going to fold ace jack to to a bet. Uh, to a jam, but like ace nine, ace eight, ace seven, we want to keep those hands in. Um, so it's a kind of a dodgy area with 19 big blinds, but I can see why you'd want to uh, shove. Um, but I think sometimes when we're at fine table, the thing is now he either folds now or he calls and he, we either win or we lose there if we're this player. Um, now I've, I've said this before that it's good to be the aggressor in this spot because you either fold pre-flop, which is which is nice, you pick up eleven and a half k, or you win a showdown. It's uh, you know it's, it's it's good rather than when you call you have to win a showdown. There's no other way. Um, but I just think this is you know this is this is it, and he's not you know he's still got nineteen big blinds, so he doesn't have to panic, um, and he's still got. Well, Still got half of my stack. So if he doubles up through me, uh, doubles up through this guy, he's still like he's going to be going to second place. Uh, so it's it's interesting to to think about that. I think if I think sometimes if this player had five hundred k and we had six hundred k and this player had seventy seven k, then I could more understand this at you know three hundred because he's got a strong hand. He wants to get all the chips in um, whilst he's ahead, whilst he's a favourite, uh, and he wants to he wants to double up uh, so that he can get back in the game because he's going to struggle to get back into the game on this stack side. But the fact is, we've got a sim, you know, one double up, and he's into into the second place again. So um, that's what I do. I'd call in that in that spot. Uh, but he gets eliminated, and we get to uh, get to heads up. Um, so we'll see we'll see how how things go uh, here. Um, we'll try and whiz through. Let's see, we're 20 minutes, about 19, 20 minutes into the video. So we'll try and get through the rest, of the whole of the heads up uh, here. Um, so we've got 35 big blinds, so you know we don't have to panic. Decide to min raise it straight off the bat. He decides to three bet. He min raises and we and we fold. Um, again, I'm looking to play hands in position. I'm not looking to blow the pot out of position. Um, we look at the stack size. He's got 144 bigs and we've got 32. So we double up. 
you're up to 64, he goes down to 100 and something, 100 and, brr, I can't work out, 112. Big blinds. Uh, so we need two double ups to, to go into the into the lead here. Um, but I don't want him to start three betting hands like this previous hand and then him being able to play in position and play you know pretty well against us. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Decide to limp here. Um, I was gonna mix it up, heads up um, at the start. Ace King decides to limp again, unfortunately he chooses to check. Uh, he bets and we call. I think it was good just to check here. Um, he could easily have had a hand that's hit, uh, connected now with, with the turn. Just looking to get to a cheap showdown. Uh, unfortunately, he's, he rivers the two. Um, the reason why I chose to limp um, with ace-king here is similar to the, uh, my analysis of the ace-queen hand, in that I want to keep in all of his worst ace-x and king-x hands. So if the board comes now, he's got something like king-5 offsuit. He's not going to raise it. You know, check. The board comes king six three or something like that he has top pair and top pair heads up is a pretty strong hand and he's not going to he's going to well he's going to struggle to get away from it uh so we just managed to keep in those those hands that we, we dominate um the thing is i don't want to be uh folding all the time uh, to his raises because we're going to just blind away and then we're going to find it even more difficult to, to come back the raise here and he just decides to jam can't do anything about that uh he decides to jam now um just kind of Kind of weird. Decide to limp here. We pick up the three. Decide to bet, and he raises us, and we and we have to fold. Um, I mean, he could have a quite a wide range. Let's just quickly look at his flop raise. So he hasn't raised. Has he raised? Yeah, not 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 massively. Um, he's going to raise us here, so we put him on a king or a ten. Um, obviously, we have. A draw to to two pair and to trips, but uh, and a back door flush draw. Um, but with our stack size, we're getting pretty short. Um, and he shoves again. And I decide to min raise in the hope. I think if he shoved at this point, uh, I would definitely call um, because we are incredibly short uh, now compared to compared to his stack size. And this is a good spot to get to get chips in. And we raise king four, and he shoves. Okay, and we min raise it with, with the sevens. Um, I can't remember what I chose to do. I chose to check here, uh, and then we have to give up on the on the turn. Um, do I like that? He folds quite a lot. Uh, flop C bet. Um, I think I prefer a bet here because there's going to be a multitude of cards on the turn that are not nice for us. Any over card to the seven, so eight, eight plus uh, heart, uh, even a ten jack or a queen. Um, probably we've already said that anything higher than an eight is going to be pretty gross. There's quite a few cards, so I'd like to, to bet here and bet probably about half pot. Um, okay, so now we're down to like twenty bigs. He makes a min raise, and we have a blocker, ace blocker, um, and we need to start making a stand. Um, and the reason I decided to shove is because we've got fold equity and also um, he may well call us with a hand that we are ahead of, something like king, queen, king, jack, king, ten. But it does fold and that's probably the best best we could have hoped for. Ten seven here. Um, I don't have to play it. Uh, I just don't like to give up my button too often. Um, so he min raises and we call in position. And I think it's going to be pretty difficult for us to get away from from this spot. I don't think, you know, he could have a queen, uh, at which point fair play, we're out of the tournament, uh, heads up. The fact is that we are going to have to have a miracle to get back into this game. Um, we started off heads up pretty short and then we played pretty passively to begin with, which I'm not happy with. Um, and so we pick up a pair like this um, on a board when we, you know, it's unlikely he has a queen, given that there are two there already. Um, then I think you know we, we're probably going to be going with it. So we have to decide whether or not we want to get it in here. I think if we raise here, it's, you know, he may well shove with a lower pocket pair or a king jack, uh, jack nine, something like that that has a has a draw. Um, I'm not sure. Let's have a look. 
how often he's going to be raising, uh, how often he's going to be double barreling. He then decides to check. Um, I think I prefer a bet here. I uh, checked as well. Uh, it's a pretty, you know, it's a great card on the river. Um, and I'm hoping I go for some value here. I uh, probably could go a little bit smaller to get called by ace high. Uh, he does call. Um, he managed to, to pick up a nice a nice pot. Um, so that puts us back to about 30k. Here we decide to fight with the jack nine. Uh, I'm getting pretty good odds, but I'm not sure. It's, I just don't like playing out of position. Um, and it's something definitely something that I'm I, you know I'm working on. Um, I just think we know that poker is an easy game when we're in position. Um, so we want to be able to you know play out of position when we have a strong hand. Um, but then play in position with with a, with a wider range. Jack nine is kind of the middling cards. We can flop the top pair with it and be comfortable. Um, this is exactly the situation we don't want uh, to be giving away chips and then just completely missing missing the flop. So the blinds have gone up now, back down to 22 bigs. He can min raise, he folds. Uh, he raises and I'm hoping that I'll do just shove. So having said everything I did about the ace queen when this player got it all in. Um, I think this is a good spot to, to flat again, uh, keeping all of those worse ace, x and king, x hands. Um, the only thing is that we don't want to be folding the best hand on the flop, uh, which is going to happen a lot, like two thirds of the time. If we call, flop comes, we check and he bets and we you know we haven't hit the board, we have to fold. Um, but I just think in terms of the times when we do hit an ace or a king, uh, or some kind of flush draw that we can we can choose to check raise. So I do shove and he folds unfortunately. Um, so it's just a, another way to, to play it. Um, and yeah, he, I mean he's been raising quite a few buttons. He has, I mean, he has given us a walk a few times. He has folded his button to us. Um, but I just think a flat was, was would have been better there. Uh, so it's a min raising this time. He shoves kind of back to where we were, holding the queen eight. So we're getting some luck by just min raising the button. Um, pocket three is just an interesting. Uh, I think we definitely have to open, um, but it's you know it's not going to be easy to play post flop. Definitely a board I want to be want to be betting. Uh, and unfortunately, he makes a raise on there. Uh, he could easily have a have a ten. Um, could also just be messing with us. It's a pretty big raise. I I feel like this he this player understood um, like making smaller raises to kind of leverage the rest of our stack. He doesn't need to make it twenty four k here uh, to sort of commit us to the to the hand. Uh, he could make it sort of nineteen k and get the same same effect. So uh, this makes me feel like he's probably trying to get us to fold here. Um, but I just don't want to kind of I can't call uh, and see what happens on the turn. So it's either committing now or, or, or letting it go, and I choose to let it go. 0.63, decided to just take it off 6.4. So we're now kind of, we should be looking to play aggressively. Um, wow, well, what a perfect spot. So we continue min-raising. I think if we limped here, it might have got suspicious, but we min-raise with the aces. And he shoves, and he has ace jack, and we double up. That choose is nice. And we're following the 8.6. So to min raise, so once again we we are able to take some pots down pre flop. Uh, king nine suited might be the kind of hand that I could limp and play in position um, because it seems at the moment he's not uh, he's not really defending his big blind so much. He's he's being aggressive, um, so either shoving um, they get when we, when we open uh, or he's just just letting it go. So. Um, if I want to play a pot in position, I could call here, and if he raised, I could call again and play a pot in position with a hand that you know, plays, plays okay. Uh, a five this time, he gives us a walk. So Jack-10, the perfect hand uh, example of a hand that I could limp to play. Yeah, good. Uh, so again, he min-raises, so it gives us perfect odds with a hand that plays brilliantly post flop. Uh, pick up a gut shot. I don't think I'm going to be folding. So it's kind of deciding now whether we we just call here um, or um, or raise. Uh, we've seen. I mean, if you look at his c-bet stat, he's he's c-betting almost one hundred percent, but only double barreling half the time. So we can kind of guess that he's if he's betting the turn, he has it more often than not, or he's been able to bet a card that's 
No, good to him. Um, he checks. I'm really hoping that I bet this turn. I'm not sure. Okay, I do. Good. Um, I think if we check the, the the turn and then he checks the river, it means, for me, it points towards him having a hand that is able to bluff catch. Um, because if he had a hand that had no no value on this on this board, he would probably bet the river instead because should we show weakness on the turn. So he'd want to get us off the hand. Um, so I'm... I'm really glad I bet the turn then. Um, and that's something that we've been able to exploit there is the fact that he's not betting the turn enough. Uh, well, he's, he's betting it less than half the time that he's betting, sorry, about half the time that he's betting the flop. So that analysis all made, uh, all made sense. Uh, King, Queen, again, a hand that we can limp and, and play in position. Um, this time he decides to, to lead. So often he is donk betting. I mean, it's, these stats are probably going to be pretty obsolete, uh, pretty useless, simply because a lot of them were from pre pre head, uh, heads up. Um, but he hasn't dunked bet yet. Uh, I can't remember what I chose to do. I do decide to call with two overs, backdoor, straight draw, backdoor, flush draw. Uh, he now checks. I'm starting to see. If, um, he could have easily just been trying to steal it on the flop. Uh, or he's got a hand of uh, value. Now, if he had complete air, um, he he would fold on this on this uh, turn card. Um, so betting here is absolutely you know is is reasonable. If he has a hand like eight, if he has an eight or a jack or a two, he's likely to check call or check raise. Um, so it's pretty. Pretty difficult to kind of narrow down his range. I prefer a bet here because we're semi bluffing. We've got two overs, we've got a flush draw. Do decide to check. Um, and then he checks as well. Uh, I don't think there's any point in betting here simply because of the reasons I stated before that if he had complete air, uh, I expect him to at least try and steal the pot. Yeah, uh, we do check. And he does have complete air. So, um, well, that was that was good for us. Um, that's kind of changed my thinking slightly. The fact that he bet the flop, checked the turn, uh, checked the river, um, and now we've seen that he, you know, he's got pretty aggressive stats, um, but he's not willing to, 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 you know, follow through when he when he doesn't have it. Uh, here, decide to to limp again with the jacks. Uh, pretty awful flop. Um, he fires. I don't think. We, yeah, definitely think we can call. And he checks again. So, again, he could have a bluff catcher, um, but he's. Pro <clears throat> he, I mean, we've seen this now. He bet the flop earlier. Check the turn. Uh, and check the river. Um, so that's when he had pretty pretty crap hand. Uh, I don't think there's any value in betting. I don't think we're going to get value from like worse enough of the time. Um, that's just uh, so he's, he's looking to steal flops so that we saw him steal previous hand, and then he's stealing on the turn when he when he sees weakness. So with a hand like Jack's, it's kind of hand that we can play, um, you know, perfectly in position, um, and and pick up small bets from from him. Here, decided to defend with the ten nine off suit hand, plays very well. Uh, well, it says it plays okay, um, but again, we've got a situation where we're just going to have to be folding a lot of flops, and I just am not a fan of that. Uh, still going the, the limp route, and uh, decided to bet here, paired board, uh, two high cards, well, same high card and, and one low, pretty good board to bet. Uh, so here, okay, so this time we decide to defend with the ace king. I think you could, we could definitely three bet here um, to like. 20k, 21k, something like that. Um, but we haven't put really three bet heads up yet. Um, we will keep in a lot of the hands that he that, he dom that we dominate. He's made a really small bet there. Um, we could definitely call. Feeling pretty strong about with my hand now um, with Ace High. And he bets bets again. Um, So we're trying to, you know, work out whether or not he's sort of weighted towards strong hands or, or weaker hands. Um, 
if he understands sort of ranges at all, um, he's going to expect us probably to be calling with ace high, uh, with an eight, with four, with five, sixes, sevens. Um, and it, how many of those hands are going to fold if he bets? Uh, so a six hands are going to continue, and the pocket pairs are probably going to continue as well. So he's not be able to bluff too often. Um, so this kind of points me towards him having more of a value range. I'm not sure I folded though, no. And then he bombs it again. I'm really hoping I don't call this time. I do. Um, we're just seeing that he, he gives up uh, a lot when he doesn't have it. So the fact that he is now, is he triple barrel? I'm pretty sure he did. Raise pre-flop, bet once, really small, so it's almost like he's trying to, to entice us in. And he makes a really big value bet on the ri river. I mean, it'd be great if we're able to, to pick off a bluff here, um, but I just think based on his actions so far, that he is more likely to have a, a strong hand here that he's looking to get value from. Um, could be completely wrong, maybe he's managed to you know, deceive us, but then obviously not deceive us enough because we've managed to call him down. But yeah, he did have the he did have the eight, so that's pretty disappointing hand. Uh, I'm I'm really glad that we did the analysis on his previous hands um, in the way that we did, and the fact that he was just giving up every time. But when he triple barrels it, he's you know he's he's got the goods. I just wish that I was able to make that fold, probably on the turn, um, but definitely on the river. Uh, okay, let's see where we're at in terms of hands. So we're, we're getting through it. Uh, pick up the flush draw here. Uh, we've seen him give up um, quite a lot of the time. This time it's hard to raise. Could definitely just call here um, and then take it away on the turn unimproved. Um, but, you know, what kind of hands would we choose to raise here for value? Um, probably just a jack x hand if we know that he's going to give up without a value hand on the turn. Then probably just a jack x hand, which kind of narrows down the range of hands that we can be raising. If you understood that, then he might be able to put a, uh, a raise, raise in himself, uh, but he didn't, which is good. We decided to flat with the king 10 here. Uh, he decides to bet and we call. Uh, I'm not sure I'm a big fan. Um, I think if we're going to do anything, we could raise here. It's more likely to hit our range than it is his. Um, and we decide to fire and we have to give up. So we're kind of feel like we're spewing chips now. I think maybe we've gone on tilt with that ace king hand. Uh, we limp here and we decide to defend. Uh, but wow, playing pretty aggressive and he does he does fold. There's not much we can do on that flop apart from raise or fold. Um, and the way our actions have gone pre-flop, we could definitely have a strong hand on this board. Uh, so ace x and king x hands. Um, so. You know, our raise follows through with what we were trying to achieve, um, try to represent as well. Um, but I do feel a little bit like we were on tilt a little bit, and we're just trying to you know, almost just clicking buttons, and, and and that's not good when it's you know there's quite a bit of money riding on it. He folds. Nancy, I think sometimes you can just let hands go, um, but if we're able to pick up a hand like that, then that's, that's always good as well, especially with a hand like nine two off suit. Um, but it's also, you know, sometimes you could raise those hands because you know you're not going to continue if he three bets. This time he decides to 3x and we, we got to fold. That's a limp here with the pocket aces. Um, and he bet small and we decide to, to raise. Now, once again, what kind of hands are we going to be raising here? Um, for value, how much hands are we going to be raising as a, as a bluff? So, like hands like 9, 10, or 10, 9, uh, open under uh, as a bluff, 7, 6. Um, and then obviously jack x, maybe we raise some 8x and pocket pairs in between. Um, so this player then raises us. This is in a pretty tricky situation. Um, pot's getting pretty big and we've only got about twice pot now. Uh, decide to call, if he does have a jack x hand, we want to try and get all the money in now. Um, you know, a king or a queen or an ace comes off, ace is unlikely, but if that does come off, we are, uh, you know, going to be, uh, 
be losing value if we could are able to get it in on the flop. Um, we've seen him pretty pretty honest with his bets and his raises. So his C bets have been, you know, um, you know we don't give him much credit for his C bets, but a raise like this, um, I think we should probably give credit to. Um, but now when the you know the two comes off, I think we've got to be willing to go with the hand. Um, do call, and then he checks the river. So we are now need to decide if we, I mean, we can shove here and get value from Jack X hands. Um, maybe an eight if he, you know, like that. But well, he could easily have a five here and just decide to check to trap. Um, and I mean, the fact that he's, he's decided to check raise the flop and then bet the turn leads me to think he has a pretty, pretty strong hand. Uh, I did decide to just check. So I was clearly worried that he did have a strong hand here um, because we're pretty sure about his honesty when it comes to making more than one bet uh, in, a, in a hand, so betting on more than one street. Um, and his check on the river kind of was kind of freaked me out a little bit. Uh, so I checked as well. I can't remember. All right, yeah. <laughs> wow. So we had five, two. So we, we were ahead on the, on the flop. Um, I mean, we made the right call in, in keeping him in the hand, um, but unfortunately he managed to, to get lucky on us. Obviously, if we'd raised pre-flop, he would have folded pre-flop, but the point is we're trying to uh, get him when we have, um, you know, the best of it. Um, and I think I'm, I'm happy with the fact that I checked back the river. Um, I, can remember, I actually remember the hand, and uh, given the fact that we made a big... So, you know, wrong call with the ace king earlier. Uh, I guess it was still playing on my mind, and I decided, you know, I was pretty felt pretty confident that we were behind actually here, um, and I wasn't prepared to go for um, go for it. And if we think about it, I mean, if we just check here and we we win the hand, we go up to um, almost two hundred k, which is which is great. Now, if we uh, shelf here and win. Where it's not a mass, you know, not massively different, two hundred and seventy k instead. Um, whereas if we check here and we lose, we're not going to lose any more chips. But if we shove here and lose, then we, you know, we're out of the tournament. So I much prefer the, the check route for the, for those reasons as as well. Um, but it's unfortunate, and I'm going to find it pretty difficult to come back now. Um, So I guess I'm just waiting for a hand to, to shove. Um, and, right, with, ele with 11 big blinds, we kind of, obviously, we, we blind down a bit. Um, I do decide to, to shove the queens. Uh, I mean, the problem with that is that we haven't shoved any other hand up to then. So he knows we're going to be on a, a, you know, a slightly stronger range. Um, there's really absolutely nothing wrong with 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 just min raising here. Um, I mean that looks pretty strong. Or, or we could just call here as well and play in position. Obviously, an ace or a king comes, we're going to struggle, and suddenly the pot's going to get pretty big compared to the size of our stack. Um, but it's it's another way to, to play it. Um, not, I mean, hands like I mean this should probably be a shove at this point with queen five off suit. Uh, some of these other, I mean that's. And comfortably fold eight two, but I think having a picture card here when we are so far behind that we need a miracle and we need to be playing it very very aggressively. Oh, we do shove it. <laughs> um, I'm pleased about that. Eight three. I'm just going to let him go. These sort of garbage hands we can afford to let go with over ten bigs here. I want to be shoving, and we get called. And actually, we managed to double up, which is good. Um, so we live to, to fight another day. Um, See how many more hands we've got. Okay, um, so we've probably got enough there for another short. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is end the video here because we're up to like the 45 minute mark. Um, leave that, yeah, leave it there. Um, hope you've enjoyed that analysis of heads up. Uh, I thought it was some really interesting stuff about how he worked out his sort of betting patterns um, when he had it. You know, he was more likely to make a bet on more than one street. Um, Especially if he was, if he chose to to raise, make a raise, and then 
continue to bet on the turn or if he triple barreled it as well. Um, so we are able to pick that up. Um, sometimes difficult to do that in game. It's very much easier to do it now um, with a, a fresh pair of eyes and a clear head. Um, you know, having, I think, I can't remember how exactly, but it was like six, seven hours in you know, this tournament. You can see there, we're up to 531 hands already. Um, yeah, it was a long, it was a long, long tournament. Um, so trying to remain sharp then is uh, was 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 pretty tricky. So I made uh, a bad call with the ace king, um, but a good call with the aces um, and lift to to continue and fight another day. So uh, yeah, uh, leave me some comments. I uh, hope that's been useful. And uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you next time for the uh, for the final part, which will be uh, should be a short. Okay. Uh, so this has been Gazelle for GrindleScore.com signing off. Take care, guys. See you later. Bye.